Are you ever concerned about plastic pollution in the ocean? This is something that a lot of people are worried about. We see plastic pollution everywhere in the oceans. And there are some countries that are starting to put together legislation to regulate plastics and ban single-use plastics. And we're going to talk about that today because my own country, Canada, is starting to put in or has already started to put implement these types of regulations, have faced some challenges, but are continuing on and appealing in the court process. We're going to talk a lot about this on today's episode of Ocean Talk. Let's start the show. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew Lewin, and this is Ocean Talk. And today we're going to be talking about plastic pollution in the ocean. Ocean Talk is a show that I put together to talk all things ocean, from conservation to science to just fun things that happen in the ocean to share some optimistic ways of learning about the ocean. The reason I do this is because we don't see a lot of this on, you know, the mainstream media. We see a lot about shark attacks. We see a lot about other things that are, you know, doom and gloom, climate change and stuff. But I want to talk about something different, projects that are going on, legislation and policy that's coming into play, just so that you're aware of what's happening. And today we're going to be going to Canada, my home country. We're going to be talking about how Canada is attempting to go net zero plastic by 2030. Whether they're going to reach that or not, who knows? We see a lot of countries make a lot of great promises about going net zero for climate change, uh, net, like net zero carbon or net zero plastics, but they never really meet their mark. But 2030 is 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 very aggressive and we'll see if they make it. But they've already started to put things together. Before we get into all of that, I want to talk a little bit about the history of you know, plastics and even recycling and how to deal with plastics in Canada. For a while, you know, last 20 years, we've been dealing with recycling. You know, we've been told, we, you know, Canadians were promised that recycling was the way to handle plastics. If you put in your plastic water bottle or, you know, plastic container into the recycling bin, it was going to get recycled and it would just get made into something new. And then you'd be using it in a different form, whether it be a plastic water bottle again or something else. So people started to get all these things, plastics, and nobody really had a second thought about the plastics that we use. We put in that blue bin, it gets taken every other week and then boom, it's done. That was the process. And then we started to hear stories of like journalists started to put out these series of stories about how recycling wasn't actually being used properly and not all items could be recycled. There was a market for it. If there was a market for it, they'd be recycled. But some of them couldn't be recycled because of the complexity of the plastics. We started to really understand how plastics work and how they can be you know, basically burnt to the ground and brought back up again in another form or how plastic water bottles would only be able to be used one more time and then they would just go to the landfill. Then we started to learn that what we were doing with our plastics, our extra plastics, we started to ship them off to small island states like Malaysia and Asian countries. This is right after we found out that a report came out from the Ocean Conservancy that 80% of plastic pollution was coming from five rivers in Asia. Some of those rivers were places where we were sending our plastics to. So the US, Canada, were sending plastics to you know small island states and even other Asian countries like China. They were taking our plastics. So we were paying them to take our plastics to deal with them, but they weren't really dealing with them. They didn't necessarily have the capabilities of that waste management infrastructure to put in place. And it was ended up, a lot of it was ending up going into the ocean around them and they were being blamed for it. Of, of course, they had their own plastic issues and some of them had, like China had really high populations. And, you know, so we, we had some, we had some problems there, but finding out that Canadians and, and people from the U.S., Americans, were sending their plastics elsewhere to deal with it out of sight, out of mind. And we were being promised that, hey, this is all this stuff that's being recycled was kind of a bit of a blow. And we started to realize, the world started to realize, like in these, even these countries that were taking plastics from us were just like, you know what, you can't give it to us in this form. You need to give it to us in a better form so that we can actually recycle it or else we're not gonna take it. And after a while they decided, you know what, we're not gonna take it. And so Canada, the US and other countries had to deal with their own means of dealing with this plastic pollution. And in started to talk about legislation to ban certain plastics. So how is that gonna happen what that what was going to happen? This started that talk started to happen in 2018. The in Canada, the Ministry of Environment Canada was starting to talk about this type of, of ban, single use plastic ban. Countries like Costa Rica started to to implement those, which was great to see. And then I was wondering, how is Canada going to do this? This is a a large country, you know. Things get really complex here. Uh, not things don't obviously with government. Things don't happen quickly. So what was going to happen? So 2018, we started to hear talk about it, but never really saw any movement on it at this point in time. 
2020 hits, we get a pandemic. So there's no talk about a plastic ban. We're dealing with other things. In fact, you know, more things with plastic were being used because, you know, you couldn't use reusable bottles, like refill them in a store because nobody was taking it because of the because of the pandemic. And so that stuff got halted. Then 2021 started came around and we started to hear more talk of this bill that would ban single use plastics in Canada. And in 2020, December 2022, the implementation started. So here is basics on the single use plastic. Ban. So first, a bill was implemented in December 2022, ban of six plastic items. So you had checkout bags, you had utensils that included spoons, forks, knives, sporks, and chopsticks. You had food serviceware, which contained anything expanding, uh, expanded polystyrene foam, extruded polystyrene foam, polyvinyl chloride, carbon black, and oxo-degradable plastic, and are limited to the following items, clamshell containers, lidded containers, boxes, cups, plates, and bowls. You also had a ban of ring carriers, stir sticks, and straws. Other big thing that was coming out of this plastic ban was that no one was allowed to export these items. So producers who were producing it couldn't sell them to different countries. They had to really just stop producing them in general in Canada. So that was like a really big thing. But how did all this happen? How were they able to all of a sudden put this ban into place? The reason they were able to do this was because of the categorization of plastics. They basically categorized all plastics as toxics under the Canadian Envir Environmental Protection Act, SEPA. And so that's how they got all this done. So with this categorization, they were able to say all plastics are toxic. So we're going to come up with different legislation tools to ban certain ones and watch other ones, you know, monitor other types of plastics. So this was really interesting because this was the basis of all plastics, of how to categorize and how to deal with plastics. Come out with the single use plastic ban, which was sort of like the, the first big thing that was gonna happen. It was gonna happen in a phased approach. It's gonna start in 2022 with certain items. And then by 2023 and 2024, there were gonna be other items that were gonna be implemented and then they were gonna be banned on that. So to give producers and businesses time to deal with how the change is gonna happen and, and come up with alternative means uh, to, to come up with that. And then in November, uh, you know, everything was going fine. Things were starting to change. You started to see businesses change in terms of the containers that they were providing you, like takeout containers and utensils and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, it was really interesting because there was a court case that came out recently in November. The big plastics, essentially, a lot of the big plastic producers within Canada sued or, or brought the, the legislation to court saying that, all plastics should not be considered toxic. You can't do that. There's no evidence to say that all plastics are toxic to human beings. And it's really interesting because I did an interview with Oceanic Canada with Anthony Morente. He's the lead campaigner for plastics for Oceanic Canada. He was at the court when they actually decided this, where they were saying that they can't argue that all plastics are toxic. And I thought that was really interesting. And here he is talking about the, the decision and what came out from that. Admittedly, the plastics companies openly said, yes, some plastics do make their way into the environment and those plastics do have devastating effects. We've all seen the, the news reports and the scientific reports that whales are washing up, that seabirds are dying, that fish are polluted. They're acknowledging that there is plastic in the environment, but what they are arguing is that not a lot is getting into the environment and not all of it is getting into the environment. So obviously, you know, something that was that's always interesting to me is that these big, you know, producers, these big plastic producers, these companies are always talking about, you know, they're worried about the overall future of plastics. They don't necessarily disagree that single use plastics should be banned, but because it's it's, you know, all plastics are toxic. They're worried about future bans or future legislation that will regulate their plastics that they produce, that they make money off of, and it's going to affect their bottom line. It's going to affect their business, which obviously is a big thing and needs to be addressed. But the fact that they are saying they're taking away all these bans and all these legislative arms or with this with this decision or hoping that it'll happen is just to protect their business it has nothing to do with the health of people the health of canadian citizens or the environment it has to do with their bottom line which i always find interesting and we come up with this a lot in a conservation this always happens and it's, it always boggles my mind that we'll take greed over the health of the environment and the people of Canada or people anywhere over greed. And obviously that happens a, long, a lot. I'm not naive to that, but it always just makes me kind of wonder how people can do this. 
Regardless, you know, this decision by the court is going to be appealed and it's in the appeal process right now. So we'll see what happens. The ban is still live. We're still going through with the ban because it's in the appeal process. So nothing has changed, but that could change in the future. These are some of the challenges that the government has been, has been facing when it's trying to deal with plastics and trying to get to net zero plastics by 2030. The other thing that is just starting to roll out and it's getting into more of a public comment period is a public plastic registry. Now, this is going to be an interesting thing. And there's like it's, it's out for public comment, as I said. So people, I'll put the link in the, in the, uh, in the description below. But this is something that I find uh, interesting. People can comment on how this will work. So essentially, this registry is for plastic producers. Once they produce a plastic, document that life cycle once it hits a market. So from when it's produced to when it, the life is done of that, pro of that product and what happens to that product. Does it go to a landfill? Does it get recycled? Does it go back to the company? Um, essentially looking at what is the, is there, a, is there a ability to have that product be circular? And, and have that company have like a circular economy for that product. So really to track, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be available to the public when it gets put in. I think the idea is to put it in June, 2025, when producers are actually gonna have to start doing this. Obviously there's gonna be some challenges to this. What that challenge is gonna be, I don't know. But this is another piece of like tool and piece of legislation that's gonna happen that's gonna be mandatory for all these producers. I hope all these producers. It'll be really interesting to get access to this like public can get, will, get, will be able to get access to it just to see how people are going to deal with like where these plastics are going. I'm sure it's going to be eye-opening with certain plastics, a lot of going to the landfill and people don't realize it and the ability to actually bring those back or recycle them. Having those companies responsible and taking accountability for the stuff that they make that's supposed to be good for us or easier for us, but you know how do they deal with the end of life of that? product all this is happening you know it's been happening over the last five six years it's gonna there's gonna be more things that are gonna come out i think it's really interesting to see how the government of canada is moving forward pushing forward even though it's got challenges with this court case um, it's going to deal with it in certain ways i'm sure and there's going to be compromises along the way to see how these things are dealt with and i always find it interesting to see what is going to happen when we look at 2030 if it were really going to be net zero plastic or if it's going to get pushed back a little bit i have a feeling it's going to get pushed back a little bit but it's nice to see all these different tools coming out regardless of these challenges so i'd love to hear what you think put your uh put your thoughts in the comment below do you think this is going to happen in 2030 do you think uh do you think the government will be able to win this appeal and allow for all these plastics to be considered toxic i mean there's got to be evidence for it right like it's it can't be that difficult to find evidence that all these different types of plastics are toxic to humans and to the environment. And it'll be interesting to see how this legislation pulls through and how it gets categorized in the future. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. We're going to have more ocean talks. You know, we're going to try and put them up as much as possible. It's a New Year's resolution of mine to get more of this information in. Uh, in. And if you want to look at any of the other links of what kind of content I produce, I have a, a podcast called How to Protect the Ocean. It's an audio podcast, so you can get it on Apple, Spotify, all those different types of apps, your favorite your favorite podcasting apps. If you want to listen to more stories out there, you can get more details on a variety of different information around oceans. I'm going to be talking more about the oceans here on Ocean Talk on this YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and just click that notification button so that anytime I, I publish an episode, you get to listen to it so or watch it. So thank you so much for uh, watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. Uh, feel free to share with a friend. This has been the first episode of Ocean Talk. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Angelo, and have a great day. We'll talk to you next time, and happy conservation.